Good morning, my brothers and sisters. Welcome to episode number 47 in the book of Hebrews. And we're actually going to not be in the book of Hebrews today. We're going to go back to Judges chapter 6. So yesterday we were, were going from a, a time where we looked at Rahab the prostitute. And we, got, we looked at God using someone with a glaring sexual sin so that we could have the faith that she did. Remember, she counted the scarlet handkerchief as a saving faith for herself and everybody that she could squeeze into her apartment. And she asked, who belongs to me that God wants to belong to him? And today we're going to do the next verse, which is Hebrews chapter 11, verse 32. And he says, and what more shall I say? Time would fail me to tell of Gideon. The writer of Hebrews says that time would fail him to talk about Gideon. Well, we have the luxury in the podcast of going just as fast as the Spirit would allow. So let's let's go. Let's look at Gideon. Time doesn't fail us. We can we can take a peek at Gideon. It's from Judges chapter six and verse eleven. Here's the situation. It's the 12th century B.C.s and the 1100 B.C.s before David. It's a dark time for Israel. They've been conquered uh, time and time again by the Midianites. Whenever they grow a crop, they go and, you know, come up and steal it. And they're worshiping the wrong God. Israel is worshiping the wrong God. People are not being faithful. It's, it's a very, very dark time for Israel. And uh, Gideon is going to be raised up as as a judge. Well, he's he's raised up from this milieu of being conquered by the Midianites and, and worshiping the wrong God. And and then God intervenes. This is from Judges chapter 6, verse 24, uh, verse 11. Let me start there. Now the angel of the Lord, probably the Lord himself, came and sat under the terebinth, the name of a tree, at Oprah, that's a place, which belonged to Joash, the Abzerite, that's a, that's a Gideon's uh, father. While his son Gideon was beating out wheat in the wine press to hide it from the Midianites. So the sun is working. That's one good thing. Verse 12, And the angel of the Lord appeared to him, Gideon, and said to him, this is critical, The Lord is with you, O mighty man of valor. The Lord is with you, O mighty man of valor. So the Lord sees him in this way. And Gideon said to him, Please, sir, if the Lord is with us, then why has all this happened to us? And where are his wonderful deeds that our father recounted to us? saying, Did not the Lord bring us out from Egypt? Now the Lord has forsaken us and given us into the hand of Midian. I love that. <laughs> he argues with probably either an angel, strike one, or probably the Lord himself. Verse 14. And the Lord turned to him and said, Go in this might of yours, so this spunk of yours, and save Israel from the hand of Midian. Do not I send you? Question mark. So he's asking Gideon to go save Israel. And he says, and he said to him, Please, Lord, how can I save Israel? Behold, my clan is the weakest in Manasseh, and I am the least in my father's household. And then here's the critical thing again, verse 16. And the Lord said to him, But I will be with you, and you shall strike the Midianites as one man. The critical part of this is the Lord is with you, O mighty man of valor, and but I will be with I will be with you. So in Gideon's life, if we if we go to the rest of his life, there are some things that he doesn't do well. He doesn't finish well and he needs a, a, a fleece to sort of get him going and to, to really know that the Lord is with him as this as if this vision wasn't enough. But he does a lot of things well. After after this encounter is is over, he worships well. He becomes he becomes the man that the Lord says, "O mighty man of valor." He's hiding in the wine press, beating out the grain so the Midianites don't get it, and he turns into this brave person. The other thing he does is after this this encounter and this command is is from the Lord, he lingers in the Lord's presence. And he sees the Lord here, I think, face to face, and he knows it, and he says, woe is me, because I've seen the Lord face to face. All right. So the premise is how the Lord sees this. I see you. I see you. The Lord is with you. So I'm giving you my presence, 
and I see you as a mighty man of valor. I'm, so that's the prophecy, if you will. I'm with you, and you're going to be this great person. And remember what faith is. Faith is trust in the person of God before you see the promises of God enacted. So we see God here pointing him towards, hey, you're going to be this mighty man of valor, and I'm going to be with you. And he is saying, wait, my circumstances are terrible. God's far away. We're worshiping the wrong gods. And he has to sort of change his view about God. Um, and he has to kind of wrestle with this. And similarly, why is why is he in the Hall of Fame of Faith? Because we need to wrestle with the same things that Gideon did. His experience and his success here is lauded. So the, the circumstances are the bad uh, the absence of the Lord, the people, are they had, they had Asherah poles. They were worshiping the wrong gods. Even his father had an Asherah uh, pole, which is bad. And um, this vision is you're, you are going to be you're going to be brave. You're going to be valorous and you're going to save Israel. And he gives all these excuses. And verse 16 is the key. But I will be with you. And then uh, 634, a little bit later, it says, but the spirit of the Lord clothed Gideon. All right. So here's the practical thing. Bad circumstances, not feeling very brave, not following the Lord as faithfully as, as you might, not being in a good place. Welcome to judges. Welcome to Gideon. Welcome to his life of faith. It's the presence of God that changes everything. So faith is this trust in the person of God and the vision that he has, the promises that he has before all of that has come true. So Gideon's going to wrestle with this and he's going to start from I am weak and I am the least. And the Lord is going to like convince him, if you will, or change his heart. And say, but I am with you. So the Lord is saying, hey, look at me. Don't look at the circumstances. I see you. I am with you. And that makes all the difference. Let's be like Gideon. Let's be a person who the Lord is with, almighty male of valor. And the Lord said to him, but I will be with you and you'll do some stuff for me. Amen. Thanks for listening.